Press. So welcome everyone. So um, welcome to this week's group call, the 23rd of August, 2023. And before we get into some of the uh, the summary, uh, currency summary report, I wanted to talk uh, a bit about, um, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, how future interest rate expectations affect today's exchange rates. And it's really important to, uh, to keep this in mind when um, <clears throat> when uh, obviously trading currencies and looking at forecasts, etc. And speaking of forecasts, so when we look at forecasts, right? So we typically go to um, you know many uh, banks forecasts and see uh, what you know they're uh, they're looking at in terms of exchange rates uh, for the third quarter, fourth quarter, first quarter, etc. And um, you know looking at the consensus, right? Because not all banks are going to agree that um, you know the euro should be worth 112 in the future right or 115 in in the fourth quarter or 118 in the first quarter right different banks are going to have different forecasts based on the information that they're processing and their models etc but what we want what we're looking to do is get as much forecast as possible and then go with the consensus. So let's say, for example, for example we have 10, um, you know, forecasts and, um, you know, maybe seven of those are saying that they're all, they're long euro dollar, um, then you typically want to go with the consensus. There is um, a, a slight caveat to that also as well is obviously looking at when the forecasts have been updated, but also as well, is does the data support the current forecasts, yeah? So um, economists make these forecasts, but it's important that the data has to support those forecasts. Otherwise, without the, you know, the right data and the supportive data, um, you know, with, for, for, for things like GDP and interest rates and interest rate hikes or holds or cuts or, you know, uh, GDP growth, then, you um, it's just not the forecast are just not going to happen right so as much as these are the, some of the smartest people in the world and they've gone to the, 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 the you know the the bright schools etc um you know these are forecasts based on um of course mainly the data supporting the narrative so going to uh uh here let me just get my uh pen tool one second draw right and it's it's really important to to understand the expectation. First of all, the effect of 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 interest rates um, uh, on you know currencies. Yeah, and so uh, we're going to have let's say for example this one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's do that. Four, and then one, two, three. Right. So let's call this um, one second. Let's call this. You know, let's say this is the first year, the second year, the third year, and the fourth year. And this is based off of you know interest rates, right? Interest rates. And this is going to be, the, you know, the chart. And this is also one year one, year two, year three, and year four. Now, imagine you've got currency A and currency B, right? So currency A, let's say currency A look to in the first year, they're looking, the central bank is hiking rates and, um, let's say um, central bank B are looking to hold rates. What you should see on a price chart is, is what exactly? You should see something like this, where you have, if, you know, uh, let's say for example, bank A is the base currency and bank B is the quote currency, yeah? 
you should see something like this on the price chart where you know prices if you're looking out on the daily time frame the weekly time frame you should see a trending market right there's going to be periods in that trending market where you're going to get pullbacks etc but overall you should really see um you know prices trend to the upside over the space you know of the of the of the first year if the data supports that narrative and the central banks continue to hike you know every announcement and um and uh, in bank with bank B, they hold every announcement. What you should see is something like this. Of course, there are <clears throat> other th factors involved, you know, risk sentiment, etc. But ultimately, if we're just looking at interest rates, yeah, this is what should happen. Interest rates hikes typically appreciates a currency. Um, and so, you know, against some uh, another bank that's holding rates, you should have an interest rate, um, or a, a, um, a bank that is holding rates where they're happy with where, where interest rates are, you should have this um, on a price chart if you zoom out to a daily or a weekly over the year, right? So that's what should happen now. Let's say, for example, now that bank um, A then decide to hold rates in year two and at the same time, you have Bank B also holding rates, yeah? What should you see on a price chart? What you should see on a price chart is something like this. No prices go into a range or what is known as an auction, right? Where, you know, um, prices being accepted in terms of um, the value of the exchange rate, right? Um, so, you know, banks and institutions are saying that, you know, we think that the exchange rate should be worth, you know, between this high and this low, whatever that exchange rate is. And, you know, there's no reason for price to really, you know, trend to the upside because both central banks are holding rates. That's what we should see on a price chart in year two. Now, Let's say, for example, in year three, we have a uh, central bank are looking to, for example, uh, hold rates, yeah? And bank B are looking to hike rates, yeah? What should we see on a price chart? One second. What should we see on a price chart? And what we should see on a price chart is a trend to the downside, right? Where the quote currency is getting stronger. Yeah, they're looking to appreciate their currency and bank A are not looking to do anything. They're looking to hold rates. And so what you should see is a trend to the downside, right? Uh, again, over the space of, you know, that, that time period. Now, what happens when you have a central bank that is, again, looking to, bank A mate might look to cut rates, and let's say we have a situation where, you know, bank, um, you know, B is also looking to potentially cut rates. Again, what should happen is, you should see a situation where if both central banks are looking to appreciate their currencies what should happen is you should see again similar to where if central both central banks are holding rates if both central banks are hiking or cutting rates what you should see ultimately is a bit of a an auction a, a range where prices sorry one second yeah sorry, where, where, where prices are in agreement, right? Because both central banks are looking to devalue their currency. And so um, the market will, again, you know, can't see the difference between the divergences between the two central banks. You know, you've got a divergence here, for example, you've got a divergence or convergence here between central banks, right? And that is what causes price to go higher or lower. Whereas when you have banks doing the same, um, thing in terms of interest rates um, and their monetary policies, what you typically have is what is known 
as an auction, right? So that's what you're likely to see on a price chart if you zoom out during, you know, zoom out on, on the daily or, or the weekly. Now, one of the things, you know, when, when we look at, um, you know, future expectations, it's important to uh, note and especially when we see something like the dollar and what's happening with the dollar, you know, today. Yeah, there's been this narrative that uh, hikes are going to remain higher for longer. And also the fact that there is um, going to be, uh, or there's likely to be a soft landing. What does a soft landing mean? Soft landing means that uh, less of a chance of a recession, right? So a hard landing was a recession, you know, and the soft landing is hopefully the economy, um, although it will contract, it won't contract into a recession. Now, um, the expectation at the beginning of, you know, the year was that the, um, towards the second half of the year, so quarters three and four, or um, let's say, turn these to quarters now. So rather than doing these as years, you know, this is Q1, Q2, right? So we're talking about the dollar right now. So Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, yeah. Was that in Q3 and Q4, was that the, the expectation was that the dollar was supposed to enter into a, um, into a recession. So there's gonna be some sort of um, hard landing. Those were the fears, yeah, because the beginning of the year you had interest rates being hiked, yeah, which should then contract the economy so that there was likely to be either, um, you know, a hold coming and then some sort of contraction by the end of the year. And if we look into, you know, the first quarter of 2024 next year, because of the contraction in the economy and the hard landing that was supposedly forecasted, um, what comes with contractions and recessions comes rate, rate cuts, right? And so this was what was supposedly supposed to happen at the beginning of the year. Lots of, lots of banks were um, forecasting this, but now what's happened is it's something different. So what we've had is, is and let me just change the color of this to, right? But what we've had with the dollar is, yes, we've had rate hikes because of high inflation, yeah? But now what we've had is, instead of you know, the forecasts at the beginning of the year expecting a rate cut by the end of, you know, uh, you know the fourth quarter into the first quarter, now what we're seeing is potentially the fact that they may look to cut rates maybe into the, uh, the, the the second and third quarters of 2024. So rate cuts are being pushed out, pushed further into uh, the year, into, into next year, All right? And so, as I said at the beginning, what you need, even though we, you know, banks are forecasting, um, you know, uh, uh, prices, going forward, you need the data su to support the narrative. And what's been taken, I guess, economists by surprise is the fact that the US economy has been a lot more robust and jobs, um, you know, have been, um, employment has been high, unemployment has remained low. And so that is supporting the, the dollar. And so, again, just to kind of go over this on a price chart, Let's go to there, let's go here, right? So just so that we can visualize this, and what I'll do is I'll just try and keep this uniform. So that's that. One, two, three, four. So what we've seen is, is that on, on a price chart, let's say for example, we go to the dollar index, we saw, we would see a rising delete that we would see a rising and what you should have seen beginning of the year is a rising dollar yeah the dollar trending higher trending higher and then towards the third quarter and fourth quarter of the year what we should have seen is prices do something like this yeah but what in fact we are seeing because 
of the now rate you know, the market is pricing in rate holds in the third uh, in the fourth quarter right as well as into the you know the first quarter of next year what we've seen is is something like this where you get the you know, prices go higher trending higher and now we're getting more of a stable price so this was you know the the, the, the forecast and now this is the reality and it's because the market has to now price out what it was pricing in and forecasting at the beginning of the year yeah and so that is what is supporting uh, the dollar and will end up supporting all currencies right it's whether the market forecast yes you know come true based off of data supporting those forecasts but if data doesn't support those forecasts of course you know data can change no one has a crystal ball um, then what we have to do as traders is recognize when the narrative is is shifting or shifted and when that data although we are obviously trying to buy the rumor and sell the fact there has to come a point where we have to say to ourselves well you know is you know a euro 115 right still achievable based off of you know and we'll get into the currency summary report in a sec you know the um the uh, the euro contracting in terms of having economic issues and the us dollar on the other hand in fact surprising to the upside um and uh, you know gdp remaining you know very strong jobs remaining strong unemployment remaining low and um now you know bond yields two-year yields are saying that you know indicating that interest rates in fact rather than being cut by the end of the year they're still remaining high and saying, well, in fact, we expect rate, um, rates to remain higher for longer, which is, again, supportive. They're not cutting rates into, you know, the third, fourth quarter or first quarter of 2024. That are supporting factors for the dollar, whereas the euro, on the other hand, it's not supportive in terms of, you know, their economy contracting and a contracting economy brings on what exactly? A, a, a contracting economy right will end up bringing on rate cuts right that's pretty much what happens and so yes there is obviously inflationary problems inflation is coming down um and if inflation does come down but so inflation comes down yeah it's coming down but gdp growth yeah is moderating or you know continuing to you know be okay as far as you know there's there's still some growth in there then that actually is more supportive than inflation coming down but for example in a gdp going into a potential recession yeah and that's where we find the divergences between you know the euro and the dollar and so that at the moment is what is supporting the dollar um you know markets pricing out rate cuts and potentially pricing in more rate cuts for the euro of course we still have to keep our eye on that but the data at the moment is not supporting a stronger euro especially against something like the dollar it might be stronger against the euro might be stronger against maybe a worse currency like for example the new zealand dollar you know as bad as maybe the euro and i wouldn't even say the euros it's bad in terms of you know terrible because they're not in a recession and the New Zealand dollar are right, but it's all all about the dog with the least fleas. So you can trade, still trade by the euro, but it's about choosing which currency you're trading the euro against. And so, um, yeah, it's really important to understand, you know, future um, uh, economic events. Obviously, you know, forecast the data supporting those forecasts, and if the data doesn't support those forecasts, then it's very difficult to you know um to take those uh forecasts as um you know a, a guiding light right you should really always look towards what the data is actually saying the actuals because those forecasts will change yeah according to what the data you know uh, as, as the data starts to come out and it's either going to support the forecast or it's not and if it doesn't support the forecast then it's 
you know, then you have to either, you know, stay out of the market. You don't necessarily have to always buy. Also, you can stay out of the market, wait for the dust to settle, uh, or you can change, you know, your bias. So, yeah, that's, I thought that was really important to, uh, to go over. And so let's, uh, let's, 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 let's go to, um, yeah, so covering obviously future, how future interest rates, expectations affect today's exchange rates. Um, you know, we basically just, again, just to reiterate, it's always important to, um, to look to the future, obviously, but the data today has to support those future forecasts is what I'm saying. 